All right. As promised, David Carl joining us from Naples, Florida, the NCAA coaches conference end of season. So David, you have to tell us how do people treat the head coach of the national championship men's team? Is there a certain, do you get a special chair? Are there certain perks to being uh, in your position? What's it like to be at this conference? having gone through the season that you did with the ending with the national championship? Yeah, we, um, we just started our league uh, meeting. So we just finished our NCHC league meetings, the national meetings start tomorrow. So um, yeah, really just a lot of, you know, sincere congratulations and um, maybe a little higher bar tab here and there for, <laughs> for me and the staff, but um, no, it stays pretty low key. Um, generally no special, no real special perks. Um you know, down here for that. Yeah, I think it's kind of goes without saying that first single people notice about you is your age, which to me is kind of unfortunate because you've been a coach for so long that your age doesn't really co- jive with it, man. You're 32 years old. And I mean, I'm 39 and I'm just starting my own coaching with eight U hockey. Okay. So you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and your path was very unique to becoming a head coach in the NCAA ranks. So um, not even having the chance to play division one hockey, If you could just briefly give that overview of what caused you to take the coaching route uh, and then who kind of molded you into the coach that you were leading into this championship. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I was committed, signed to come to DU um, back in 2008 um, was invited to the NHL draft combine um, in Toronto, Uh, you know, did a battery of testing there and ultimately was, um, diagnosed with with a condition that uh, forced me into retirement and um, the same day I was diagnosed Denver uh, called and told me that I'd have a, a family and a home uh, at Denver still and um, yeah, obviously that was that was George Wazdecki, um at the time and, and Ron Graham whose son uh, played in the National Hockey League um, as well was a goaltender and um, you know so that's really where it started and um, each year at Denver, you know, George kind of gave me more and more responsibility and, um, Derek Lalonde who had, who now is with Tampa, um, helped recruit me and he ended up in green Bay, uh, my senior year. And he had an opening after my senior year, invited me and offered me a job there in green Bay in the USHL, um, was fortunate enough to, to get that opportunity and worked there for a year and a half. And then, uh, Jim Montgomery was then at Denver and, and he had a full-time position open up and interviewed for it, got it and, uh, did that for four or five years. Uh, and obviously Monty went on to Dallas and, um, you know, he was a big proponent of, of me replacing him. And obviously that really helped. And, um, yeah, I got the job, uh, would have been back in summer of 2018. So, um, yeah, I mean, like you say, obviously I'm, I'm young, um, or younger and, uh, but have been, you know, really involved in coaching for 14 years now, um, and kind of was forced into it or pushed into it, um, in an unfortunate circumstance, but, um, have found a way to take advantage of opportunities, um, you know, that have presented themselves to me and, um, you know, I'm real fortunate and grateful to, to be where I'm at today. David, I'm, it's such a fascinating story. And I wonder if you, I don't know if you reflected on it during this season as you were, you know, winding toward a national championship, or maybe you've thought about it since, uh, since that final game, but I mean, it could have gone a bunch of different ways, right? I mean, Denver could have said, listen, sorry, we're, you know, you're going to have to do something else or we don't have room for you or the, that door might've been closed to you, or maybe you, you know, the fact that you felt open to doing something that wasn't playing, lots of people may, you know, have taken a different tack to what must've been very, you know, devastating news for you. Do you reflect on that in a, a moment, you know, where you've, where you've won a championship? Um. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I think everyone's life has moments um, where, you know, big decisions, you know, there's forks in the road. And um, sometimes those things happen that are that are in your own control. Sometimes those are things that are out of your control. And um, there's no doubt, again, I I feel a lot of, uh, you know, 
there's a lot of gratitude and, and I feel blessed to, to have been given the opportunities I've been given. And, um, you know, in, internally, the things I can control, I, I've always tried to take responsibility for and, um, and manage the best I can. And, and certainly there's been some external things that, um, that have happened, you know, in my favor, um, that the opportunities have presented themselves, but then I've tried to, again, do the, then control what I can and take advantage, um, the best I can of those opportunities. But I mean, no doubt a bit, but again, for me and everyone's life story, there's, you know, if I hadn't, I hadn't done this or gone to this school or done that, like this wouldn't have happened. And, um, so I think you're, you're kind of, you end up where you're supposed to, and, um, you trust that. And, um, I've obviously, you know, been, been real fortunate after, um, a real tough thing to go through at a young age. Last year was so goofy with COVID and protocol and games played. This year was a little bit closer to it for NCAA teams. And I, I kind of look at last year in your club as it didn't look like it went very well, just in terms of win loss and probably went out anyone wanted, but you know, how was your team able to take what you learned from last year's season again, and all the adversity that every team faced trying to even get through it to roll that into this year and come out and win a championship. I mean, it takes skill, but it takes a lot more than that. What brought your team to that point where you guys were able to contend? Yeah. I mean, it's um, yeah. I mean, the last 18 months of maybe even 24 months now have been a real journey um, for our staff, for our players, for our program. Um, you know, we sent our kids home on March 13th, uh, 2020, bought them all one-way tickets, got them out of town, and uh, they didn't come back until, you know, first, second week of September. And, um, you know, I will say, are we, are we fortunate at Denver? Absolutely we are, but we're not. Um, we don't spend money like Michigan or Minnesota or Wisconsin. And so we do do more with less, and a huge part of that – is what we do in the summertime. And so not to have that because of COVID going into the 2020, 2021 season um, was a huge detriment to, to our team building, to our building a foundation. Um, the first time we were all in a locker room together uh, was in Omaha in December um, at our league's bubble. And so it was just a really odd dynamic. Um, we were in a part of the country that, um, the COVID restrictions were, were much higher, much more stringent um, in regards to, you know, separation, cohorts, all the thing. And so it was just, a, it was a really hard environment to, to build a team in. And um, I think one thing that we did at the end of the year, um, you know, we started to come together a little bit more, but once it didn't go our way, we quickly, um, our staff and our leadership group for the next year took responsibility for, for what the year was and that it wasn't up to our standard. And, um, you know, and we, we tried to turn the page as fast as we could. And it started, you know, the world started opening up again back in spring of 21 and we got a full spring workout in, um, we got our summer back to normal. We had our alums in the building, you know, Terry Butcher, Gambrell, O'Connor, um, Stasny, Bozak. I mean, that stuff's important. It's an X factor that we have where, they come to Denver. I mean, a lot of college towns aren't destinations. We are. And so our kids that play at Denver come back and then our, our kids who are at our school get to interact with them, be around them, learn from them. And so anyways, I guess to answer your question, it was just, it was a turning of the page quite quickly, um, taking responsibility. It wasn't up to our standard. Um, and a lot of people came back with um, a championship in mind and getting Denver back to the level that, that it is, um, you know, known to be. And um, that's Brink, that's Gutman, that's Stapley, Barrow. I mean, a lot of veteran guys came back that, that really had something to prove. And then we were able to build a real good foundation through our summer regular training camp in the fall. And um, we added a real good freshman class at our leadership group included from day one. And I just think we became a team um, quite quickly. And um, that was a huge part of our success. Yeah. David, you and I <clears throat> spoke earlier in the season about Troy Terry and breakout year for him in Anaheim, obviously. And it's, it's almost like a rite of spring now for NCAA, NCAA players 
who finish their season and then go to NHL teams. You've had a couple of players. You mentioned Bobby Brink, uh, uh, Savoy, I believe, is in, uh, in Edmonton. And I, I wonder what that's like, not just for you and your coaching staff, who are so close to them, having gone through your season, but but to their teammates, to the guys who will come back to you next year um, to see their teammates, are, you know, sort of taking that step towards the NHL. And I wonder what that's like. What's that dynamic like? Because it happens very quickly. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, um, I guess, first and foremost, it's, it's a lot of fun. And um, when we recruit these young men, it's, um, we feel the recipe for individual accolades and successes through um, being a part of something bigger than yourself. And, and that's obviously our program. Um, and so being two feet in and, and being committed to a team and being able to play in big moments is and, and try and win championships. Um, you have to learn to win and people want winners. And um, so we think that's a, a huge part of it first and foremost. And then, you know, you, when you win, you have, you have your moment, like on the ice, you have your moment in the locker room and then it starts, it does, it just starts to kind of fray from there and, you get back to the hotel and everyone's got parents, alumni, friends, family, and kind of spreads out. And then, you know, Brink was right to Washington. So he didn't even come on the plane back with us. And, um, you know, so but to answer your question, I mean, our team, you know, his teammates, us as a staff, we're just really excited for Bob because he's one of those players who, you know, he sat down and said, I'm coming back because I want to leave this place better than I'm found it. Um, I want to win a championship and I want to be a Hobie top three. And, you know, he said that back in early April of 2021 and um, the kid went out and put in the work and um, had a huge level of confidence to him all year and, and led the team in a lot of different ways. And um, and then I think the coolest part is, you know, he texts me at four in the morning after we win. He said, coach, I, I totally forgot. But you have a minute to talk. Are you still up? I said, yeah, I'm still up. And uh, so he comes up and lets me know that he's signing with Philadelphia and, um you know, obviously we're, it's a great moment for, for the two of us. We want players to come here with an opportunity to move on um, while winning at our level. And um, one of the coolest things he said was, you know, I want to make sure and let you know that I want to be around the program. I want to be like Terry, like Gambrell, like O'Connor. Um, and that's what I think the people say culture a lot, but that's a little bit of just the family atmosphere Um that we're trying to continue to build on and create that's been set, you know, by the people before us. And um, that was a really cool thing. So, you know, Bob will be back in Denver this summer and he'll, he'll be with his teammates and um, they'll get to celebrate a little bit more through the summer and, and whatnot, but um, it's about the team and then, and then building from there. And so everyone's really excited for, for Bob and obviously Sav too, um, you know, had a great playoff run for us, a great season. And, um, going to get some games in and in Bakersfield and then uh, and be able to burn a year of his contract and do that like Bob did. So um, just thrill for these guys. It's what we're here for. It's to try and win and, and move people along to achieve their dreams. David, that's something I was going to ask you about. You gave me a nice little lead in about it that I played, you know, I played at St. Lawrence from 2001 to five. And the landscape was a lot different in college back then. Players didn't leave as often as they do now. Uh, and, and there's been a bit of pressure, I think, put on by NHL teams to sign players early after sophomore year, junior year, because they're afraid that they're going to lose them to unrestricted free agency down the road. I can't fathom what it's like as a coaching staff at the college ranks of a really successful program, knowing that you're probably going to lose some of your best players due to this at some point. What safeguards do you have to put in place when you're recruiting to make sure that your team is consistently bringing in the top talent to continue to be successful? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I think um, in today's age, roster management is, is probably the most critical thing. I mean, we, the first three weeks of our season ending last year um, were probably the three most important weeks of building this season's championship team, um, the decisions we had to make, the work that we put into it. And, you know, it's, it's a good problem to have in that, you know, we get to celebrate a championship, but we have to, we do have to turn the page quickly and now we get to enjoy it in moments. Um, but we're, we're 
you know, we have recruiting calls, um, you know, this week with, with potential players. Um, you know, we have, we have one-on-one meetings with, with our players that, that are coming back and um, a couple have chosen not to, um, and that's fine too. And so just, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, you know, I think our staff and, you know, enjoys that it's, it's a different, unique challenge that maybe wasn't quite there um, 10, 15 years ago, but it's the rules of the game. And we kind of always um, talk about whatever the rules are. We have to, we have to adjust and find a way to be successful. And um, so how do you safeguard against it? Um, I think number one is having really open and honest communication with um, the player, the advisors, the parents, the NHL teams as to what the timelines are um, and really just trying to build a relationship of trust so that the truth is being shared. Cause that's, where you get in trouble is when you get blindsided. Um, if you have an opportunity to plan and prepare, um, then generally you can you can do that and you can adjust uh, relatively quickly. So I think that's the biggest thing, uh, Mike, is is just the the communication piece of it, and then um, making sure that we're looking out for the program that way. And um, you know, so it, it's not easy, but it's it's good problems to have at the end of the day. And um, it's challenges that, that we, we take a lot of pride in trying to be really good at. David, going to let you go, but I, I am going to, I'm curious about one thing before we, we let you go. And we talk about players making, you know, the, the evolving from top flight college players to NHL prospects. Do you think about the potential, what your future looks like in terms of coaching and, whether there's a spot in the NHL for you, does that something you do? You, do you dream the NHL dream as a coach? Yeah, I mean it's a great question, Scott. I mean, um, you know, for me as a as a player, um, again, I was fortunate enough to have been invited to the combine, and um, obviously, I was still a, a very long way from achieving that that NHL dream. Um, but I was confident that I would reach that potential, and um, I would have told you that I had the next, you know, 15 to 20 years of my life planned. And um, that obviously took a a hard left turn Um, on a whim. You know, we started with things out of your control and that that was something that was completely out of my control. So um, I guess to answer your question, I I try the best I can to stay in the moment. Um, I do understand the, the reality of, of, uh, of my age. I am 32. Um, you know, and so will I want to do this for the next 10 to 15 years? Will I want to do something different? Um, maybe. Um, I think winning a Stanley Cup is always uh, something that you dream about as a child. And, um, you know, for us, having an older brother went to the NCAA route um, and played in the NHL, played, he played in two cup finals. I mean, that's what, you know, we grew up watching and, and dreaming about was trying to win an NCAA championship. And, in trying to win a Stanley cup. So, um, it's certainly something that, that we think about, but I can tell you, um, today, uh, my priority is trying to be the first, you know, try and help Denver be the first college hockey program to 10 championships. And, um, we, we took a big piece of, uh, chunk of meat out, uh, this spring by, by getting to nine and, and tying Michigan and beating them on the way. So, um, that's where our focus is at today, but, um, who knows what the future will hold. It's a long-winded answer, but I got to it. <laughs> no, it was perfect. I, I loved how you got there. So, um, David, thanks for hanging out with us. As you and I traded text, make sure you're wearing lots of sunscreen. Us fair-haired guys got it. can't be too careful in Florida. So um, enjoy that and enjoy the, 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 the after effects of winning that national championship. Enjoy every minute of that. And thanks for coming and hanging out with Mike and I. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate all you guys do um, for the game, and um, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Take it easy on St. Lawrence next time, if you will, for me. (laughs)